From the corner of Munson and Civic Center Boulevard, welcome Fanatics to Menor Ice Arena for game number 31 of your Menor Ice Breakers season. Today, the Icebreakers host in the Battle Creek Rumblebees. I'm Angelo Vlada, and thank you for listening right here on YouTube.com, your home and away home for all Men or Icebreakers games. And joining alongside me is Jared Tennant, communication manager and color commentator as we get set for the fourth ever holiday game in Icebreakers history, having played on a pair of New Year's Eves and Thanksgiving last year, now on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, a Monday matinee match up here with a bit of a delayed start due to a transportation issue, but Battle Creek is here, safe, and will be ready to play hockey momentarily. And I want to update you on a quick trade. Uh, it affects the yellow and black attack. The Rumblebees acquired two new players in a trade with the Elmira Enforcers just earlier this afternoon, now getting Austin Petrie and Willie Denolt for financial considerations. Petri is in his second year in the league and has had brief stints with Elmira and Watertown this year and Danville last year. He has no points yet scored in 21 games and Denault played in 17 games with Elmira and has one goal on the season so far. So Battle Creek getting two new players. They won't be in the starting lineup today. But who will be in the starting lineup will be a former guy here from right at Lake Catholic High School. Justin Vance will be wearing number 12 for today's game for the Battle Creek Rumblebees. So all kinds of storylines coming in, but now we're gonna take a look at our starting lineups. And Jared, as you give us the starting lineups, a little hats off to you as here for the Breakers broadcast booth, this is your 20th game on color commentary. Oh, it's a big milestone right there. I feel like a veteran already. You're doing good. So bring us those uh, starting lineup for the yellow and black attack. Yeah, so Battle Creek, a little bit shorthanded today. Only 13 players dressing for the Bees. In goal, it's the former Delaware Thunder, Morgan Hudson, left wing, Maxime Noskov, right wing, Jacob Wolf, and center is the former icebreaker, Ryan Alves. Uh, left defenseman, Sebastian Crystal, and right defenseman, another former icebreaker, Connor McNary. And Ryan Alves comes into the game with Declan Conway serving a one-game mis uh, game misconduct suspension today. Ryan Alves will be the man with the highest goal line on the uh, year for anyone on the ice right that will play eligible today. Ryan Elvis comes in with a 7-9-16 scoring line and besides Declan Conway, the next highest scores are both at 6 for the Icebreakers and putting them in to the back of the net. Now let's take a starting look at our the Menor Icebreakers lineup. In goal will be number 30, Jordan Brandt, the Onway, Alberta, Canada native. That back line in double blue, left defenseman number 19, Brody Duncan, right defenseman from the Columbus River Dragon and former Carolina Thunderbird, Yuri Peshtuka. Centering that line, number nine, Nate Farrington. Left wing will be number five, Alex Morrow from Westerville, Ohio. And at right wing, it'll be the Matthews, North Carolina native, Jackson Tucker. Your starting laps here at the Menor Ice Arena are sponsored by Ganley Village, providing everything from financing to auto service and parts. They are the dealership experience you've been waiting for. And welcome here, it is Kids Day. Kids getting in free, as always, under five, and also from or four and under. And from five to 12, we'll get in for only $5 with a paying adult. So a good crowd of fanatics here. There's no school, and school's gotta be in session, Jared, because both of these teams have only picked up one win in the 2020 portion of the year, and they both came on that first Friday in January when Elmira fell to the Battle Creek Rumblebees. Rumblebees only win at one and 29 right now, and Menor picked up a win in that middle of the two losses against the Dashers, but it's been a little bit of a rough going for the Icebreakers, one in their last six wins. Yeah, of course, with the Icebreakers having lost 10 out of their last 12 games, there's one team in the FPHL that needs a, mo a win more than they do right now. It's Battle Creek, who comes into this game with just a ton of injuries and players unavailable at the moment, so it's going to be a little bit tough, a little bit shorthanded for the Bees, but they've been battling hard lately. We'll see how they do against the Icebreakers. We're also miss missing a few key guys today. Yeah, the key thing we've been looking at that's really stood out is the Icebreakers struggling when they don't score first. And that's what we've seen a lot of recently. Some of the stats have been fickle, uh, but the one that seems to be a dangerous thing for the home icebreakers is when they don't score first. So we'll see if they can do that today. Interesting being here on a Monday afternoon. And that reminds me, Jared, do you think the weekend's over? 
Not yet. No, it's not because it's Mo Monday for the first time and maybe the only, the only time in franchise history. It's a Mo Monday. You might physically be at work or in school. Well, you're not at school because it's off today, but your mind is still on weekend time. That's why at Mo's we've got burrito specials that will make you feel like it's still a lazy Sunday, even though it isn't. So end the weekend with Mo Monday and visit us today at our two menor stores, South Euclid or Mayfield. Welcome to Moe's. So we talked about the Icebreakers needing to score first. You cannot discredit this Battle Creek team who, I don't know if any other team has had to weather the storm more than them. Not only being one of four new teams in an expansion process, the only team not getting an expansion draft, last to the party, and then their players have just been a revolving door uh, through trades or other reasons that they haven't been able to have them out there. And they keep fielding a team on the ice. And they played hard. They finally got that first win, but it has definitely been a tough go for the last team to join the FPHL. Yeah, I said earlier in the season the icebreakers can really relate to what the Bees were going through, but I think at this point Battle Creek's had it even tougher than Menor had it in their first season just in terms of everything being stacked against them and just being put in tough situations, but credit to those guys not giving up and still playing hard every night. They are doing what they can up there in Battle Creek, Michigan. Busy day today. Uh, in sports, actually, the NBA in 14 games. We've got the Super Bowl set, Chiefs and 49ers, and we've got Battle Creek and Menor here at Menor Ice Arena. The only game in the day I see there's two Wednesday games, including an Eastern Division matchup between Elmira and Watertown. And actually, in the same hour, it's the uh, Detroit Pistons, the Michigan NBA franchise, getting underway. And the Cavs will be playing later today in the 5 o'clock hour against the Knicks. But besides that, wanting to score first what would you say is the number one thing you're looking for from the guys in double blue tonight well first of all you gotta get the power play going they were 0 for 10 against the dashers very ugly on the weekend I believe it was 0 for 14 or 15 overall so gotta get that going when they score a power play goal they're a much different team than when they don't and we'll see the goalie matchup tonight will be jordan brent who's at Two and four with a 3.15 goals allowed per game and a 9.06 save percentage in just under 400 minutes since taking over for Austin Rodebush, who's done very well for Roanoke so far. We'll tell you about that in just a bit. It'll be Morgan Hudson for the Rumblebees, the visitors, who comes in at 0 and 2 with a 5.77 goals allowed per game and an 8.59 save percentage. He'll cross into the 200 minute mark as he's at 197.26 today coming in in minutes played with Joel Eisenhower injured and Jacob Mullen being traded over to the Carolina Thunderbirds who's had quite a bit of success for the guys down in Winston-Salem so far. So the Rumblebees have taken to the ice in their yellow jerseys with black and white trim, black numbers, white nameplate, and honeycomb decals. We get set for the Icebreakers to take to the ice here on this Monday matinee matchup. And again, we thank you for joining us as always. Good crown of fanatics on here. We're going to step away for the player introductions, and we'll be back with the national anthem and puck drop from Menor Ice Arena. Keep it right here on YouTube.com.
and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and join the players, coaches, and staff in removing your caps as Danielle Yegel honors the United States of America, those who are serving, and those who have served with the singing of our national anthem. Our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watch Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets rang loud The bombs bursting Well, a great national anthem rendition, some harmonizing there, led by Danielle Yeagle here at Menor Ice Arena. Thank you again for joining us on this Monday afternoon, joined alongside by Jared Tennant as the two teams get set for opening puck drop. Once again, the visiting Rumblebees in their road yellow, black numbers, black and white trim, white nameplate, and honeycomb decal. They will move left to right today in the first period. The Icebreakers in double blue, dark blue uniform, with blue and white trim, white numbers will move right to left. It'll be Nate Farrington taking that opening draw today. Going up against former icebreaker Ryan Elvis and top goal scorer Ryan Elvis. So good for Elvis. Spent some time with the Dastras and Icebreakers last year and been one of the leaders for the visiting Rumblebees. And uh, sorry if we had a bit of a technology difficult. We are underway, 1938 on the clock. Sorry for that small technical difficulty. And the icebreakers now with an early whistle, 1937 after the early shot on goal for Menor. Once again, joined by Jared Tennant on color commentary. And uh, on this Monday matinee matchup, fourth holiday appearance for the guys at Double Blue. It'll be Tim Perks taking the draw, left defensive circle against Ryan Elvis. Pestuka now from the left side of the circle feeds it behind the net to Stuart Dant, who is on a two-point streak, one of three icebreakers on a two-point streak right now. That shot goes just over the top crossbar from Tim Perks, the Oxford, Michigan native. Duncan flips that one down, but pass bounces off, and now the Rumblebees have a chance. A little bit of a fast break, one on man to beat, and that's for Noskov, but the icebreakers' back line will be able to retrieve the puck. Stuart Dant now leaves it for Pestuka, stolen, and a wind-up shot there goes out of play. That was from the stick of Marco Luciani, the Toronto, Ontario native. He had a good look there at Jordan Brandt. Yeah, a little bit of a careless turnover there by Pestuka. You can't take these Roman Bees lightly because they've shown, they, I mean, they beat Elmira. Elmira's, they're coming up on second place now in the East Division. They're not a team that's going to be easy to beat. You still have to give it your all to take them down. And both of these teams hungry for a win only. Well, Battle Creek with one overall, but both one win in the 2020 portion of the season, and we're just over halfway of that season. Rumblebees in their expansion year, Icebreakers in their second year. Soilus trying to cycle it back. A little bit of a miscommunication. He takes a blow to the face from the physical Blake Nada. Another one of the Icebreakers on a two-point streak. The other is Stephen Fowler, 
who will not be playing today along with Declan Conway and Zach McKenna. Those three icebreakers won't be out there today. Wind up, goes behind the net, able to hold on to it. That's Adam Howie now behind the net. Howie was looking for the look, the Illinois native. Penalty coming up here on the icebreakers. I think that's going to be Haytham Oade who took Irma be down right in front of uh, the B's bench. Haytham Oade on his first trip into the ice today. And he's Nata, going actually. to the box. Well, Haytham Oade, you mentioned, though, is uh, the newest icebreaker. 61st guy to wear double blue. Made his home debut on Friday. Picked up his only point of the year so far. Actually against the icebreakers when Port Huron was in town. We'll have a face-off now, right defensive circle in front of Menor. So Nada, two minutes in the box for high sticking, and the Rumblebees put the Icebreakers on the penalty here already, two minutes into the game. Trying to work it to the slot there and get that to Ryan Alves. It's worth mentioning, Alves, the former Icebreaker, of course, has scored his last two trips into this building. So we get another penalty coming up here. And I know uh, Alves scored as a dasher when he returned here. He's had good luck scoring against Menor. And how about this? The Icebreakers lose two guys in the first minute 54. Not necessarily the way they would like to start as Brody Duncan will now join Blake Nada in the box. That'll put the Rumblebees on the five on three advantage. And if you are Battle Creek looking to get off to a good start, this is your chance. Minute 42 still on the clock against Nada. Now two minutes will go up against Duncan. And uh, when you look at the Rumble, oh, four minutes will go up against Duncan. When you look at uh, the Rumblebee stats, they went tied after the first period. That's when they picked up their win. So they need to start early in order to get that going. Mark Steele now feeds it left circle, trying to work it center. Now right to Elvis. Elvis winds up and just misses wide left. A boarding and a tripping call against Duncan. So a couple of minor penalties on the same play to Brody. Wind up shot there from Steele and it bounces back out at him. The Danville, New Hampshire native. Now that one, a stick save made by Peshtuka. And Rumblebees looking to see if they could set something up there. We're looking to go slot, they go instead wide right. Now the cycle back, Steele winds up getting another stick save, that time made by Farrington. It goes wide right, bouncing deflected off. So six minutes of penalties against the Icebreakers in the first just over two. Now left circle, looking, looking. They'll send it wide right. He had his man Noskov there, center, who might have been able to get a good wrist shot off, but they didn't elect to go to him. Now Noskov does take it up, feeds it right side to Alves. Alves, another stick save. Brent on his skates, going back and forth, protecting that net. 36 seconds left in the penalty against Blake Nada, and still 2.52 against Duncan. Steele now, once again, he's got a, a man left, and that pass will go a bit wide, and Stepan Jurovic will be able to clear it around the net, part of that check council that back line when Peshtuka and Jurovic are in and both teams on the change now with 16.41 remaining in the first period. The icebreakers kind of lucked out there. It's like Noskov might have just lost track of the blue line. He carried that puck right out of the zone. Now Stavros Soilis crosses the blue line, swings around the net. He'll cycle that one back to Adam Howey. A little give and go here now to Alves. Excuse me, back to Soilis. And the shot and the save made there by Jordan Brandt, the low save. So it is now a five on four as the NADA penalty has expired, but a tough penalty against Brody Duncan here in the first couple minutes of the game. Yeah, Brody had some issues last night with some untimely penalties. Or not last night, that was Saturday night against Danville. Spent a little bit too much time in the box. Now Crystal winds up and it deflects back out. They've had a lot of deflecting shots. They lead four to one in the shot on goal. Zero zero here still from Menorice Arena. Now Crystal again, a stick save once again made by the back line. That was Dimitri Daniel, the Minx Belarus native. The Rumblebees now in their own zone. Looking across into the neutral zone with Stuart Dant watching on. They'll feed that one across the blue line. The icebreakers will meet them there and they will send it the length of the ice. Coming out to get it is Morgan Hudson with an 0-2 record so far for the Rumblebees. Once again, a 5.77 goals allowed and an 8.59 save percentage. And now as he's played at least three minutes of this game, has crossed into the 200 minute mark of minutes played for the Rumblebees. Spill down there takes Henry Berger down and the Rumblebees recovered. It's Connor McNary, one of a couple former icebreakers that are currently on the Rumblebees roster. He, along with Michael Sullivan, who 
played in uh, two games. Thomas Day. Or Michael Thomas. We did have a Michael Sullivan, but Michael Thomas, who played in just two games, Sullivan played near the end of the season. Thomas was more midseason. Now Alves has it between the two circles. They'll wind up, and that one will go hard off the backboards. 14.57 remaining, and 50 seconds in the penalty against Brody Duncan. And also Justin Vance, who is an area guy, played or helped coach the Lake Catholic Cougars here at this rink, is on the active roster as well today. I think for the Rumble Bees, that was... I'm not sure we have a 14. I'll double check the rosters, but he took down Alex Morrow to prevent a breakaway attempt. So Rumble Bee will go to the box. A bee in the box. I want to tell you, fans, next time you're here, visit our mobile team shop next to the bleachers to get your official Icebreakers merchandise gear up for the season with the only source of official Icebreakers merchandise. And soon to come, you'll be able to purchase online. And don't forget the ultimate Icebreakers experience is the Founders Room, where you can enjoy restaurant quality food and a chance to meet head coach Ian Duncan and players at every home game. Tickets start at just $30 and are available at menoricebreakers.com. Now the Icebreakers have it at the blue line in the defensive zone of the Bees, and they bounce that one back out. Farrington trying to work it up to Esri, trying to get that offense going. Who will step up with the scoring line changed with Menor? Losing Butita to the call to Quad City and Moscow on the trade to Columbus. And now today, Conway on the one game suspension. That one, a nice save made low there between the pads by Hudson. If you look at the scoring for the Icebreakers, it's Brody Duncan with six goals, Nate Farrington six, and Esri and Morrow both with five. And that is your next top scores behind Declan Conway, who has a 26-20-46 scoring line, and inches closer to Mark Esri's all-time points between the first two seasons. Declan Conway, the Painesville, Ohio native, but will not be out on the ice today. Pistuka is on the ice. Nice stick handle past the circles, but the Rumblebees back line forces him by the head. And how about that? Hudson pulled out, but makes the short save using his back to kind of box out that shot. I think Yuri Pashuka was looking to add to his highlight reel there. A couple of nice dangles to get around a couple of Rumblebees and just uh, left that puck right in the crease and Hudson was able to dive on it in time. 14.03 remaining and the Icebreakers are back to full strength and they are on the Lake Health power play for the next minute and 20 seconds. Want to thank Chris Lewis, Rashawn Bailey, Cassie Mann and Malia Harwood as well as Lake Health for providing medical staff today and throughout the entire season. So the five on four advantage now for Menor for the next minute eight. Stuart Dant crosses left circle, but that lost, got a little bit ahead of him. And the uh, Cristal, the Rumblebees, will send that the length of the ice now. Yeah, one of the things that Ian Duncan had pointed out after Saturday's loss against Danville was just too many undisciplined penalties from the icebreakers and a couple of them here in the first five minutes of this game as well. So continuing that trend. Tim Perk swings it all the way around blue line. Now to Duncan back out there after serving the four minutes and a nice glove save made by Morgan Hudson. He's had a couple of nice saves, the one between the pads and that one, the left glove save. Number one for the Rumblebees, the lefty, the Ottawa, Ontario, Canada native makes the left-handed save. Only 39 seconds and the Icebreakers 0 for 10 at the last game on Saturday against the Dashers on the power play now. Trying to improve that number with 39 seconds left in this Lake Health power play. It'll be Farrington on the draw. And he will win that draw, gets it back to Blue Line. Alfonso Diaz wind up off the right pad there of Hudson. Farrington now. Daniel winds up and a nice save again made low by Hudson. And you know, the Rumblebees goalies, whether it's been Joel Eisenhower, former icebreaker, Jacob Mullen, Morgan Hudson, or any of the ones they've had in their rotating in between the pipes there in that hive, they have had to defend off so many shots, a plethora of shots always coming their way. And Morgan Hudson, the current goaltender for the Rumblebees, actually had a pretty good appearance against the Icebreakers. It was a 5-2 Menor win in Delaware when he was a member of the Thunder. He stopped 19 out of 20 shots in relief of Aaron Taylor. Esri now gets it to Farrington. Farrington trying to get it tomorrow, but a good stick move there. Made by number 22, Ethan Bush Anderson, the Marquette, Michigan native. 12.48 remaining, only seven seconds left in this power play, and with the Rumblebees applying the four check, led there by Volf, I don't think the Icebreakers will capitalize on this one, so now 0 for at least their last 11 on the power play. But Esri says, let's try to make something happen off the power play, and just misses wide right after a nice stick handle move. Morrow now leaves it for Esri behind the net. Which of the icebreakers will step up offensively? Preferably multiple guys, but now here comes the Rumblebees on the counter. Maxim Noskov 
Sends a wide left pass. It's retrieved eventually by Tamey. Now back to Naskov. Turn, shoot, and it's deflecting off the left post there. Stuka got hauled down. Icebreakers wanted the call, but they're not going to get it that time. And Pastuka went down on the far boards. Rumblebees now cycle it back in their own defensive zone and will send that one the length of the ice off the backboards. 11.57 remaining now here in the first period. And a whistle on the ice. We want to thank our off-ice officials, Scott Tennant, Greg Butella, Greg Kopp, Fred Hayer, Russ Arala, Joe Knight, Brandon Cottis, and Daniel Savitz. Taylor Ruyer on game day operations. Frank Schmidt, operations intern through Menor High School's business program. Larry Rummel, Al Moon, and Lawrence Rummel on the sound crew. Jared Tennant alongside me on color commentary and communications manager. And Casey Healy, intern through the Auburn Career Center Interactive Multimedia Technology Program. Now trying to get interactive down here at the other end are the icebreakers and break open this 0-0 start. The Rumblebees have played solid and actually have the 6-5 shot on goal advantage here early. Tangled up behind the net there, trying to break free the puck. Duncan's going to get a hard wrist shot there, and it bounces off of the jersey of Sebastian Crystal. And again, the Rumblebees clear at the length of the ice once more, and that'll again draw the icing call. Rumblebees are doing what they can, though, to get that away from their, their net and limit some of the shots on goal that the icebreakers are trying to square off on. Be interesting to see how uh, how long it takes them if they can hold out because with only 13 guys available you get gas pretty quickly you got to have those longer shifts to give guys a little bit of a rest on the bench and the icebreakers have been shorthanded lately for once they're on the upper side of this and now it is Haytham Wade with his first trip out onto the ice the Houston Texas native and former port here on Pollard Dimitri Daniluk will swing that one around the net catching it at the right side of the blue line is Alfonso Diaz the Pembroke Pines Florida native but now the Rumblebees force it back into the Icebreakers' defensive zone. A little give and go left to right across the ice. They'll send that one behind the net now. 10.45 remaining in the first period of play. The only Monday matchup here in the FPHL. On Martin Luther King Jr. Day, the Rumblebees and Icebreakers both looking for their second win of the 2020 portion of the season. Stewart Dan crosses blue line, winds up, and it deflects off the left glove there of the lefty Hudson. Now that one goes off the post. Nobody there to crash, though, and Noskov will work it into the neutral zone. That pass a bit ahead of his man, Valf, and the Icebreakers will dump it behind the net. you got to think the men are, uh, offensive unit, if they would have played the left side there of the net, might have got a good look at Hudson. We haven't had a ton of chances early in this one. Rumbies are doing a pretty good job defensively, limiting the chances. 6-6, six to six, the shot on goal advantage here at Kids Day at Menor Ice Arena, one of the many great promotions. Now the feed all the way up tomorrow, but the whistle against the Icebreakers, close there to getting a fast break opportunity, oh, but no, so, no such luck as we roll on 9.56. Want to thank a few of our corporate sponsors, Marco's Pizza, with locations at Men Around the Lake, Willoughby, Painesville, and South Euclid, Kemp LLC, Conway Land Title, Toe Drag Apparel, CSP Insurance, Wingate by Wyndham Hotel, Market Street Family Restaurant, Global Real Estate Advisors, Spuddy's Tavern, Vitamix, Homelight, an online real estate company, Lake Erie Marine Sales, Mosaic Properties, LLC, Stadium Grill, Preston Products, LLC, Bethlehem Christmas Lights Park, Cana Winery, Habco Tools and Development, McGarry and Sons, Nova Southeastern University, Auburn Career Center, Menorai Serena, Fitness First, Ganley Village Automotive, JD Cleaners, and Burger IM. And Slam coming out now to the Fanatics here at Menor Ice Arena. The Icebreakers were at Burger IM yesterday for a nice team meet and greet and some burger and fries. But right now, Icebreakers not out to lunch. It's 0 to 0, 9.56. And you gotta, if you're a Rumblebee fan listening at home, you gotta like the start so far. So we'll now have a Face off right defensive circle. Behind the net now. Rumblebees get it left side blue line. Wind up goes wide right. In that corner now on the near boards. And the Bees will cycle it back into their own defensive zone. Crystal being pushed back behind the blue line. Nice four check there by the very physical Blake Nada. And now. Tripped up there. Rumblebees able to feed it forward. McNary in his first shift on the ice. The former 
icebreaker, the Orlando native. And another whistle on the ice now at 9.23 remaining. But as we're saying, Jared, if you are a Rumblebee fan, 0-0 halfway through the first isn't a bad way to begin. Yeah, like you said, playing pretty short-handed tonight. Icebreakers offensively, it's been pretty ugly so far without Declan Conway, their leading scorer. Of course, when you look at the Icebreakers, when they played the Rumblebees earlier in the season, they dominated the season series, and a big part of that was because of Butita and Conway. John Butita in six games had 18 points against the Rumblebees. Conway had 16 in six games, nine goals. So without those two guys, it's a different team. Averaging three points a game for Butita. But now the penalties continue to rack up against Menner as Alex Morrow heads to the box for the next minute 45. And the Rumblebees once again have the five on four advantage. This will be a critical time for them as they continue to get a few guys in the box, double blue, that 0-0, maybe break it open and try to strike first for Menner. They need to uh, evade that happening and uh, start limiting the penalties. Now, Alves crosses blue line. He'll go right circle, but that pass a bit behind his man, and the icebreakers got lucky there as the Rumblebees had numbers. They'll work it into the neutral zone. Chip forward, Alves unable to keep possession of the puck. 1.10 left in the penalty kill, 8.30 on the clock. 0-0 is the score here on this Monday matinee matchup. That one goes flipping off of the Rumblebee stick. That's uh, Sebastian Crystal. And now between their own circles, crosses the blue line. Nope, feeds it back to Soilis. Stavros Soilis crosses the icebreaker's blue line, dumps it off to Adam Howie. Howie back to Crystal. Crystal blue line, feeds it forward. Nice shot there in traffic. But Jordan Brand able to tip it back out. 40 seconds left in the penalty kill. Rumblebee still with a chance, and that one misses just wide left from Luciani Stick. Couple good looks on this power play for the Rumblebees. Yeah, on the year, Rumblebees are only 8.7% efficiency on the power play. Meanwhile, the Icebreaker is 86.4% on the kill. One of the better penalty killing teams in the league. So we'll do a face-off right defensive circle here. Rumblebee's trying to capitalize. Crystal with his third shot on this penalty kill against the Icebreakers, but the save made by Jordan Brandt. So Brandt getting tested once again. We mentioned earlier about Austin Rodebush. Picked up an overtime loss yesterday against the Macon Mayhem for the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, but in two games now has stopped 44 of 47 shots on goal as a member of the Rail Yard Dogs. Now just missing there on a rebound were the... Uh, Rumblebees on a second chance opportunity, but Rodebush has done very well so far. Butita with a 1-3-4 scoring line in seven games up with the Quad City Storm. So a couple of former icebreakers doing decently in their starts in the SPHL and their respective teams. And Roanoke with the all FPHL uh, goaltending core with Henry Dill and Austin Rodebush right now. And Dill had a shutout yesterday. Yeah, Henry Dill had tremendous success as a member of the Carolina Thunderbirds. 0-0 is the score here, 7-10 remaining in the first period of play. Thanks again for joining on, on this Monday afternoon. Alex Morrow trying to feed that one up to Tim Perks. And Rumblebees broadcaster Terry Ficarelli alongside us in the Breakers broadcast booth providing the local coverage up in Battle Creek, Michigan. Dimitri Daniel now crosses into the neutral zone. Now flips it for a nice glove move there. That was Mark Steele. Rumblebees now avoiding the forecheck. Able to do so, but nobody there, and the Icebreakers will retrieve the loose puck in the neutral zone. Now evading Valf, who's applying the forecheck right side. Fanatics trying to get into it here at Menor Ice Arena, 0-0. Nada trying to feed it up to Esri. Esri has it on the far boards. Official jumps out of the way. Esri now, spin to Nada. Right circle has got two points in as many games, and that one goes off the post. Officials today, Emmett Caldwell and Peter Banasek, and the linesman Chris Forden and Dave Zarnick. 6.04 remaining here in the first period. Icebreakers will chase that puck down. Alves was looking to get there first, but Menor's back line did so. They feed it into the neutral zone, but it's the yellow and black attack coming away with the puck. Now on a shift for the first time today, Jason Stone, the St. John's native. Yuri Pastuka left circle wide up and he puts it in the right corner. And Yuri Pastuka, you were talking about getting highlights. He scores his first goal for the Metal Icebreakers at 5.42 remaining here in the first period. Icebreakers jump out to the 1-0 lead. Yeah, that's the first goal of the season for Pastuka with Columbus or with Menor. Got four points on the year now, but he's one of those guys that 
is one of the more capable offensive players for this Icebreakers team, so it's definitely good to see him getting going. Yeah, Pistuka picked up an assist the other night, his first point for Menner, but right there, from the left circle to the top right corner at 542, and that is enough to finally break this one open. We mentioned, could Menner score first? They've struggled, regardless of who they've played, when not scoring first, and that at least won't be a statistic against them today. So Yuri Pashtuka, hats off to the Czech Republic native, picks up the goal. And good to add him in. He's had a decent weekend. He started coming into a rhythm. That offensively minded defenseman. And he finally makes it happen here today in the waning moments of the first period. It was a really aggressive move by Pashtuka cutting hard to the net. That's definitely what the Icebreakers fans like to see out of him. Five minutes even and a whistle will go against the Rumble Bees offsides will be the call. Nine to seven shot on goal advantage currently in favor of the Rumble Bees still, but it's one to zero Menner. And when we return from the first intermission, the Labatt Blue first intermission, we'll bring you the saves of the period brought to you by Vitamix. And we can't take a look at the FPHL scoreboard as this is the only game in town today. So we thank you no matter where you're listening from, Battle Creek, Menner, or anywhere in between or beyond. Now Duncan, that one goes off of a stake. They get it up to Soilus. Soilus crosses the blue line, looking to feed it over left to Howie, but couldn't get it over to him. So Yuri Pashtuka with a big goal here for the Icebreakers, makes it 1-0. Rumblebees will dump that one behind the net. 4.30 now remaining in the first period. Broke open a scoreless start, and the Rumblebees had as many offensive chances as Menner did early. Now the long shot from beyond the blue line from Richie Pankowski, good to have him back out. He takes a hard blow from behind there by Sebastian Crystal. Now cycling back, Alvis. He's doing 360 moves there as Ezri applies the four check. He's got me dizzy. 355 remaining in the period. Brody Duncan, the Toledo, Ohio native, sends it over Dimitri Danila, the Minx Belarus native. A little bit of miles in between that, Belarus and Toledo. What do you say, Jared? Just a little bit. Not a short trip. Kind of impressive, though, when you think of there's so many hometown area players as well as international players for all the teams in the FPHL that the geography on these teams is amazing. Just like that, three-prong pass there. Stuart Dant was getting it to Nada, and had they scored on that one, the assist to Stuart Dant and the goal for Nada it would have continued both men's point streaks up to three. And that was a great play, just some nice tic-tac-toe, one-touch passing, but Hudson did a good job getting over to cover uh, with Nada on the one-timer. 9-9 shot on goal, and they are evened up in that category. Spuddy's Tavern is the preferred restaurant of the Menor Icebreakers. Located Menor on the Lake, you get 10% off after your bill after Menor Icebreakers home games when you bring in a ticket stub. Another reason to get here to Menor Ice Arena where tickets start at just $13, $16 for the reserve seats or $30 for that ultimate experience in the Founders Room. I'm trying to fix that fickle net. And also want to tell you about JD Cleaners, the preferred dry cleaners for the Menor Icebreakers where customer service is their priority. They take pride in customer satisfaction, but by providing quality dry cleaning and laundering services while making the drop off and pick up or delivery of your clothing pleasant and speedy. And Wingate by Wyndham LaMalfa, the preferred hotel, the Menor Icebreakers, visitors coming in and out of town can take advantage of special room rates when mentioning the Menor Icebreakers corporate rate when making reservations. So I think the net is back on. It's not used to being uh, shot at so much on a Monday, I mean, other than in practice, so. Those nets are fickle. 319 remaining in the first period. The Menor Icebreakers with the 1-0 lead on the Battle Creek Rumblebees here in the waning moments of the first period. From the neutral zone, Chris Stahl sends it, and that's deflected back out by Jordan Brain, who's looking for his third win for Menor. Hudson looking for his first win for Battle Creek. Nada to Esri. Esri winds up deflection. Nada trying to finish, and it's bounced back out. Here come the Rumblebees on the counter, and they had Luciani, but way in front of him there, and that will draw the whistle against the Rumblebees. And all these icing calls start to add up after a while when you only have the limited number of players available that Rumblebees do today. Having guys take long shifts, just 
Makes them even more tired, makes the tough situation even more difficult. Yeah, their back line's done a good, decent job at least of clearing it away, but kind of hot-shotting it with the pressure on and then the fatigue setting in. And not a, ton of, not a ton of shots on goal for either side compared to what we've seen recently in Icebreakers games. 10 to 10 right now for both teams. In this first home meeting, it was Menor scoring 10 goals against the Rumblebees, but a, several different faces as we talked about since then. Now here comes Oade. Maybe he'd like to get his first point. I'm sure he would for Menor. Feeds it back to Morrow. Morrow now to Tucker, who got part of the starting line, brought to you by Ganley Village Automotive. Now it's center ice, Peshtuka. Cycles back, avoids the stick handle there of Volf. Jacob Volf, Czech Republic native. And Hudson tips that one dangerously forward to the slot, but no icebreaker was there. Almost a uh, an assist set up there accidentally. The wind up there. Morrow going for the rebound after the 08 wrist shot, but Hudson is able to scoop it up. Let's hope Morrow would get one there just because he created that play where there's three, three Rumblebees and Morrow behind the net, and somehow Alex ended up with the puck and fed it out to his defenseman at the blue line. And don't forget it was Alex Morrow who had the goal called back in the wild third period, first two minutes of game against Dashers on Saturday, and then it was all Danville the rest of that third period. 150 remaining here in the second period. 1-0, men are trying to knock on the door and add a second goal here in the waning minutes of the first period. Duncan, left side blue line, winds up. Look for the deflection. There was Isaiah Crawford. He was close to picking up the goal there. Would have been his third goal of the season. He added a lot of speed on Saturday night in his return. Now Mark Steele sends that one clear up to Stavros Soilis. Soilis works it left to right. That's to Noskov. Noskov behind the net now. They'll have to settle for cutting back. He gets boarded up there hard by the veteran, Stuart Dan. 1-10 remaining now. That one rattling right in the slot. And eventually, Brandt will fall in it. I believe it was Crystal was able to get a, you know, a Soilus that was able to get a stick on it as it was hanging out there in the slot, but unable to push it forward with the edge of his stick. So it remains a 1-0 game. And we talked about how you can't really call anything a must-win game at this point, but for the Icebreakers, three in a row coming up against Carolina, obviously already dropping two on the weekend against Danville. This is three points that they are very much in need of. And they have dropped the last five straight. Now Pinkowski takes the hard board up on the far boards from Howie. You know what I just realized, Jared, watching the uh, Rumblebees jerseys? And then I saw that there is no number five. I kept thinking it was a five. Does that B on the front of the jersey not look like the numeral five? I think you're the only one that sees that, I'm going to be honest. I've saw five, like five times tonight. Pinkowski crosses the blue line. That one deflects off of Hudson, and he'll lean over to make the save. Did a couple of times those lines on the back of the jerseys I mistook uh, I think it was Mark Steele number 24 for 14 and there is no 14. There's a lot going on on those there jerseys. There is. A little confusing but I like them. I mean the honeycomb decal is kind of cool but the stripes in between is just a lot to look at or at least a lot to uh, <coughs> separate from here in the Breakers broadcast booth. Duncan tangled up there with Ryan Alves, former teammates. 16 seconds left. Icebreakers have taken the shot on goal advantage. They've one when they've tied or won the shot on goal advantage 11 of 16 times this season. Well, that was not the case earlier this weekend. Oh, and they were looking for Alex Morrow on a last second fast break. 0.7 seconds left. They'll just send it along the far boards. But heading into the Labatt Blue first intermission, it's the Icebreakers 1 in the Battle Creek Rumble B0 as Yuri Pestuka picking up his first goal for Menor as we head to the second period. A good start for the icebreakers, or at least a good finish of that first period. And obviously the first half of that period, they spent most of it on the penalty kill. Just gotta avoid those undisciplined penalties, which was a problem throughout the weekend. And early on in this one, it was uh, a little bit of an issue as well. Six minutes of penalties in the first 201 against Menor. Things settle down, and the icebreakers will take that 1-0 lead into the Labatt Blue first intermission. When we return, we'll bring you the Vitamix saves of the period and get the second period action underway on this Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back shortly.
Welcome back to Menorais Arena. And wow, the Elmira Enforcers traded a couple of players to the Battle Creek Rumblebees for financial considerations. But this trade that just came down the wire officially is an unreal trade between the two New York teams, an Eastern Division trade that is unprecedented, I might even say is the biggest trade I've seen in FPHL history. As the Watertown Wolves have traded point leader Tyler Urich, that's right, Tyler Urich, to the Elmira Enforcers for Tanner Hildebrandt, Dustin Skinner, Gavin Yates, Eli Kinsman, Michael Stiliadas, and financial considerations. That is a, that's about as big of a trade as you can get, Jared. Jared's speechless. Literally, figuratively, any way you slice it, he's speechless. But that is an official trade. Tyler Urich is staying in New York, but he's going to go to the Neon Green Machine. Wow, that is blockbuster right there. Official FPHL transaction page. What a coup for the enforcers here in the Eastern Division. So Urich will join Amen Mafus. Talk about a scoring line. Mafus just picked up his 800th point the other day, and now he'll have Tyler Urich with him. Interesting. Wow, very, very interesting trade. I'm, I'm blown away on that one. Here at Spinner Icebreakers 1 and the Battle Creek Rumblebees 0. Your shots on goal, which is brought to you by Vitamix. As always, from practices to game day, our blunders help you fuel your performance and feed your life. Vitamix, Jordan Brent has stopped all 12 shots on goal, while Hudson, Morgan Hudson, has stopped 12, or excuse me, 13 of the 14. So we got a battle of two Canadian goalies once again. It was Harley White versus Brent the other day, Harley White from Quebec. Today it's Morgan Hudson, the Ottawa, Ontario native, going up against Jordan Brandt, the Anway, Alberta, Canada native. But if you're just coming back from intermission, the huge FPHL news is Tyler Urich has been traded from the Watertown Wolves to the Elmira Enforcers for a slew of players, including Tanner Hildebrandt and Gavin Yates and financial considerations. This came after a smaller trade was made to start the day. The Rumblebees acquired two new players, not on the ice yet, from the enforcers, Austin Petri and Willie Denault for financial considerations. And Elmira returns around and says those financial considerations, not necessarily the same amount, but to Watertown with a whole slew of players for Tyler Urich, who is the FPHL point leader. And that, that's a shakeup. Jared is still tongue twisted. Can't even put this into words today here on this Monday matinee. But we bring it to you here as we get set for the second period of play. Want to remind you about some of the new ticket packages available, including the brand new seven game flex package, giving you seven ticket vouchers to use at any home game this season. For more information, visit menoricebreakers.com or call 440-290-8502. Once again, I want to thank Daniel Yeagle on the national anthem today. And fans, don't forget that when the Icebreakers are on the road, you can still see them play hockey. Our games are streamed live through YouTube. Log on to Mentor Icebreakers' YouTube channel for the home games to watch for free. And this Friday and Saturday, check out the Carolina Thunderbirds feed where Drew Blevins will bring you the game. And we'll be back home Sunday afternoon for the Thunderbirds coming back to finish that split series. An Icebreakers game is a great way to get together with friends and family. We have discounted tickets for groups of 10 or more people. Contact us directly. For more information on how to schedule your group for a night with the Icebreakers, I think Jared has found his uh, his voice. Did you find it, Jared? Found a headset. You found a headset. That was the problem. Okay. What do, what do you have to say, Jared? This trade is gigantic. Yeah, I mean, that's about as big as you get in the FPHL in terms of trades. I Definitely, I didn't see it coming. I thought you were a few in the FPHL. I thought he'd always be in Watertown. But... Like Gavin Yates, I, don't, I thought he announced his retirement earlier this season, but yeah. I know Elmira had his rights, so his rights at least will be headed to Watertown, and I'd assume that the Wolves wouldn't have completed this deal without getting a guy like Yates. Jared set us up for the second period. I'm just going to inform Terry alongside me of this trade. So looking back at the first period of this one, 
Of course, it was that Yuri Pastuka goal that was the difference. His first of the year, first as an icebreaker. He played in 13 games with Columbus earlier this season, had a couple of assists. Of course, he was coming off that knee injury when he joined the icebreaker, so still kind of recovering. And as head coach Ian Duncan said, he's still getting his legs back under him. It's going to take time, but definitely a positive step there in the first period. See, Jared, you did great. We, that, you, you, you hit milestones today. 20, 20th game from the Breakers broadcast booth. You took it solo. You're doing wonderful here on uh, the Men Are Ice Breakers broadcast. I got to point out, it was that, uh, that all-check defensive pairing of Stepan Jurovic and Yuri Pechtuka that I hooked up on that first goal. Oh, Stepan it, was, the assist uh, on that goal. it was the assist from uh, Jurovic? I, I thought it was originally unassisted, but they have the assist credited Stepan right now. Now, I dubbed that at Saturday's game the Czech Council. My wife actually helped me out in seeing that uh, a uh, synonym in the thesaurus for defenseman is... Uh, what the heck am I saying? Council. There you go. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I was still thinking about the trade. So I was trying to find a word that started with C for defenseman. My wife helped me find it's council. It was still one of the only couple options. So that was an all check council scoring on that play from Jerovic to Pestuka. Pestuka picks up his first goal and second point as an icebreaker. Are people shocked about that trade? Yeah, I mean, that's. That's crazy. I don't, nobody saw that one coming. I thought it was. Do you remember last year on April Fool's Day, they announced a couple of trades, and uh, they were fake though because it was it was April Fool's Day, and they announced a couple of player retirements, and none of that was true. Farrington finds Tucker. He was trying to find Twine. As we are underway, second period, 1937, just blown away as Tyler Urich once again, longtime Watertown Wolf, 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 is it? I think the uh, singular of Wolves is Wolf. I usually put the F at the end whenever I'm writing, so okay. I'm going to go with Wolf. Longtime Watertown Wolf Tyler Urich traded to Elmira for a slew of players and financial considerations. That just came down during the Labatt Blue first intermission. And the Icebreakers here have a 1-0 lead. I wonder if these two teams know about that. It doesn't affect them right now. It definitely has a little bit more of a say against Menores, both of those teams' Eastern Division teams. And I believe they play Wednesday. Is that? Am I not mistaken? It's Wolves uh, Enforcers on Wednesday, which yeah, I wonder of, if Urich would play against already in that game. It's one of two FPHL matchups. It's Daniel Port Huron and then Elmira Watertown is the other game that night. So that'll be interesting. I wonder if he, he will make it for that uh, game that early and play his first game against the team he played all of his hockey for. And the former Rumble Bee, like Kinsman, was part of that deal going to Watertown now. It'll be his fourth team. Kinsman had, one a, year. had a decent start for the Rumblebees. Speaking of that, uh, at the other end, Howie goes flying into the corner, and they fix the net. Luckily, play at the other end. 18-18 now remaining. Icebergers with the 17-12 shot on goal advantage. 1-0. The score here in the second period. Update that graphic for you. We got sidetracked a little bit as that trade came right before we came back on the air. And the Icebreakers now in their own defensive zone. Pestuka sends it left to right to Berger. Berger crosses the blue line. He's got a couple of guys in the slot. Was looking to get it to Pinkowski, and that could have set him up for a rare goal as Pinkowski with a 1-1-2 scoring line. 17-41 now remaining. We talked about Pinkowski's uh, improvement with some finesse out there on the ice this year. And good to see him back on the ice after a little injury. Now it's McNary, the former icebreaker, sends that one right to left, dumps it down, and the icebreakers will take that puck into the neutral zone. Pinkowski look for Esri, bounce back to Jurovic. Jurovic winds up and goes wide left. 20 shots now rattled off for the icebreakers. Off to a, a decent start here offensively to start the second period. Now Hudson playing well so far, only giving up one goal on those 20 shots. Rumblebees want to keep it close. That's been the key is when they've been ahead or keeping it close, they're in the game. As Nada just misses wide left, looking to keep that point streak going. Now the other night, the Rumblebees got out to a 3-0 lead against, or 2-0 lead against Port Huron, but ended up falling 10-3. So this is the key moments, that transition. Can they stay in the game for a bulk of the period? Or will the Icebergers try to blow up an Esri? Bounces that one off the right pad of Hudson. 
Nice deflection made there by the Ontario native. It's worth pointing out the second period's been the icebreaker's worst period this season. It's the only period in which they're getting outscored, 36 to 34. Volf tried to make his way through the circles. That back line and double blue cut him off. Now Morrow between the circles leaves it for Diaz. Diaz winds up and it deflects back out. Here comes the rumble beast. Fast break to Luciani. Luciani crosses the blue line. He's going to have a chance. Nice deflection by Jordan Brandt there. And a heads up play as it was one on zero. And the net comes unhinged afterwards. Good job by Jordan Brandt to keep that one out of the back of the net. And yeah, Brandt's got that big body. He made himself look big. Covered a ton of that net there for Luciani. And Morrow getting into it now. I didn't, I didn't even notice that. Fight going on down there. Oh, there yeah, yeah. Rumblebee has lost uh, his mask there. That is uh, number 22, Ethan Bush Anderson. Him and Morrow here were up against the near boards, couldn't really see him. 16.09 remaining as the officials will sort this one out. Want to thank Scott Tennant, Daniel Savitz, Greg Butala, Greg Kopp, Fred Hayer, Russ Arala, Joe Knight, and Brandon Cottis. Our all vice officials, Taylor Ruyer, Game Day Operations, Frank Schmidt, Operations Intern through Mentor High School's Business Program, Larry Rummel, Al Moon, and Lawrence Rummel on the sound crew, Jared Tennant alongside me on Communications Manager and Color Commentary, and Casey Healy on the video stream, intern through the Auburn Career Center Interactive Multimedia Technology Program. Might be icebreakers out of the penalty killer. There's only four icebreakers out on the ice right now. Doesn't that net still look diagonal? Okay, there we go. I thought my I thought it was an illusion there. I was thinking that was not on straight. I wonder if they were to call to delay a game there. Just because, I think it was Farrington who might have ran into his own goaltender and caused that net to come off when the Rumblebees were in the middle of a scoring chance, which is, is unintentional, obviously. But Ethan Bush Anderson will go to the box, as will Richie Pinkowski. So we'll both play four on four here for that little melee between Morrow and Bush Anderson. It's a, yeah, you're right. It is actually Alex Morrow in the box, but on the scoreboard it is listed as Richie Pinkowski serving the penalty. 16.06 remaining in the second period. Daniel gloves that one down. And he looks to get it to the speedster Crawford. Can he get there? Nice move by Hudson. He got to just scooped it up and flipped it forward. And roughing is the call against Morrow and Bush Anderson. Rumblebees cross center ice, steal left side now. On this Monday matinee matchup, thanks for joining us on YouTube.com, your home and away home for all Mentor Icebreakers games. And thanks for listening, whether you're in Battle Creek, Michigan, Mentor, Ohio, anywhere in between or beyond. Minute 23 in that double penalty. Rumblebees have it on the far boards. And a whistle on the ice there will go against Battle Creek. What have you seen so far in these first five minutes for the Icebreakers? Seems like Mentor's coming out a little bit flat-footed, but the previous matchup between these two teams, I think the Icebreakers won really based on talent alone. They didn't play their best games, but they had guys like Butita, Conway, and Parker Moscow, really, and that was enough to win. Those three guys were so good, just pounding out the points every game, but right now, without those scores, it's a lot more evenly matched. Home or away, this is the last match between the two, te between the two teams. Stuart Dan, 360 spin move. He was tangled up in his skates like I was with my words, but he still got the shot off. I barely got the sentence off. Now, Noskov has it in his own defensive zone. He crosses in the neutral zone, kind of pulled back by Stuart Dan. Has it center ice now, looking to make his move. And that one goes off the safety net. So Battle Creek finally gets hockey back in town. The last time they had it was the Revolution who played in the All-American Hockey League from 2008 to 2011. And they also had the Junior Revolution for the North American Three Hockey League from 2010 to 2014. So as the last expansion team here, they play their games up at the rink at Battle Creek. Mentor has already played their last trip there out of Northwest Calhoun County. And Icebreakers in the final season matchup between these two, Ezra goes by left. We played our final couple of games against Danville earlier this weekend. Now it's the last time with Battle Creek. So two Western Division teams will be off the books for the Icebreakers in the regular season. Duncan takes the board up there against, well, that's not Austin Weber. It's the Austin Weber jersey, but I believe that's Justin Vance's first trip onto the ice, if, if I'm not mistaken. Right, Jared? I think we had to have missed him because he wouldn't have gotten a whole period when they have 12 guys available. That's number 12. He would, Austin Weber was listed as a scratch, at least. I don't know, unless... Now that is Vance out there. Okay. So Justin Vance 
He had had tryouts with the Icebreakers, a local guy here, coached at Lake Catholic High School, one of three high schools that play here in the uh, Menor Ice Arena, along with the NDCL Notre Dame Cathedral Lad and Lions and the Menor High School Cardinals, who are 19-1-1. We told you about a player setting a point record for the uh, Cardinals. Now back at the blue line, it's Diaz. Diaz over to Berger. Kyle Baxton on January 10th picked up his 175th point as a high schooler for the Cardinals, an all-time Cardinals record just about a couple weeks ago. 13-28 remaining here in the second period of play. Icebreakers find Nada down the boards. Good cutoff there by the Rumblebees back line. Soilus able to cycle it back there to Mark Steele. Steele feeds it forward. But Berger, the Claremont, California native, will get it to Nada. Nada forced to send an errant pass to Howie on the other, seat, other side. And now the Rumblebees working it up the near boards. That one will be dumped behind the net. 12.58 remaining. And at one point, the Rumblebees led the shot on goal advantage for a decent amount of time. It's now a 24-13 shot on goal advantage in favor of the guys in double blue. And the Fanatics getting it into it here. Good crowd on hand on this. Kids Day at Menorice Arena. School out for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 1-0 though, the Rumblebees have kept this game at bay. Only a Yuri Pashtuka goal in the five minute mark of the first period. Spill there, takes Crawford out. He got truck stopped there. I think Hudson might have got away with it when he hauled down Crawford right in the crease. The icing call will get called against the Rumblebees right. instead. Right in front of the crease, I should say. I think Farrington's looking for an explanation. So haven't been on the Lake Health power play in a while, but we do want to thank Lake Health for providing the medical staff for tonight's game as well as training facilities for our players all season long at the Live Healthy Fitness Center right here in Menor, Ohio, Cat corner to the arena. You'll enjoy convenient hours, state-of-the-art exercise equipment, and a friendly, experienced staff. A membership offers everything you need to help you reach your health and fitness goals. But no power play right now. It's 1-0, the Icebreakers nursing a one-goal lead. They feed it over to Jurovic. Jurovic. A stick save made there by the opposition. Rumblebees picking up speed. Luciano and Soilis are there in the slot. And he skates right alongside the net. Nice job by Jordan Brandt, who kind of just slid with him parallel to Soilis skating in. Yeah, that was a prime scoring chance for the Rumblebees. Again, the Icebreakers defense and just getting caught up too far in the offensive zone. And Yuri Pashuka was able to luckily get back and cut off that scoring chance. And good heads up play by Brandt. Speaking of heads up, that one flies right next to us here in the Breakers broadcast booth. That one Is that the up. furthest you've seen a puck travel? At, at here at Menor Ice Arena? I mean, that one came right next to us. Yeah, they put uh, Larry's equipment behind us in, in a little bit of jeopardy there, but that one was deflected. So no, no delay a game on that one. So we'll do a face-off left defense circle. Tim Perks for the Icebreakers. Adam Howie for the Rumblebees. Diaz will send it right to left to Stuart Dant. 1-0, 11-34, about midway through the second period. Windup was looking for the deflection as the Icebreakers had Haytham away. They're hanging on the slot, but he kind of almost boxed himself out unintentionally as he tried to get position in front of Hudson. Rumblebees now cross it to neutral zone over the blue line. Back to Stone. Stone feeds it over to Bush Anderson, and it deflects back out. Good bounce for Menner. Tim Perks, the Oxford, Michigan native. Skates across the blue line, now over the circle. He's got Wade hanging out there in the slot. He can't be any closer to the net other than being in it, but pushed back out there, no goal. Hate them, Wade sandwiched himself there as close as you could to the net as possible. Yeah, Wade tried to force that one in, gave a couple of good whacks uh, to the puck right in front of Mor uh, Morgan Hudson's pads, and he paid the price there. A few shots from the Rumble Bees. And he was hanging out in the hive. 10.58 remaining now. We'll do a face off from the right defensive circle in front of Hudson. Good move by Tucker, but he's pickpocketed there. And here come the Rumblebees the other way, but it's a one on three. Volf has to contend for himself now. Eventually joined by Noskov. They'll get it back to the blue line. Wind up to flex back out. Icebreakers cleared into the defensive zone, but Connor McNary is there first. McNary, icebreaker last year, spent a little bit of time with the Danbury Hattricks. Now Dimitri Daniel gets it to Nada, 
Flips into the air off of Hudson's pad, still in play. Icebergers with a plus 14 shot on goal advantage. Daniel now over to Tucker. Tucker centers it to Nada. Ezri's got a little bit of space for the right circle. Wind up and stretched out butterfly save made there. Deflecting it back out is Hudson. Rumblebee's quick on the counter. Soilus, though, can't make his way through both Berger and Pastuka. And a good backline effort there. Rumblebees were quick on the counter, however. Now the Icebergers send pass into the Bees defensive zone. Nobody home there, though, and Alves will send it right to left now. Oh, excuse me, left to right. Berger sends it forward to Richie Pinkowski. Pinkowski skates across the blue line towards the left circle. Hard shot, deflects off there. The wrist shot, a loose stick there. And that was a nice shot from Pinkowski. He had some steam behind that. Morrow with the turn and shoot. Can they sneak it in on the deflection? Pinkowski, and then over the top of the net from Alex Morrow. And Morrow and Pinkowski teamed up there along with Nate Farrington, and they were very close to put in the second goal in. And these guys just can't buy a goal right now. It seems like everything they're doing, Hudson's there, and it's been like that all weekend, really. Only had two goals in both those games against Danville, and it's kind of more what we're seeing. They're getting chances. They're just not putting it home, not finishing. When you look at it, Icebreakers take to the road Friday and Saturday. They'll invade the Fairgrounds Enix down in Winston-Salem. Catch that live stream on YouTube this Friday and Saturday. And it's Sunday fun day on Sunday when the Icebreakers return for that final game against the Thunderbirds in that series. The Icebreaker Cafe will have specials on their hot dogs, popcorn, slushies, and hot chocolate for a bite to eat during the game. Game time's 3 p.m. and the doors open at 2. That's Sunday fun day promotion when the Thunderbirds come town. So Crystal is going to get the tripping call. And now the Icebreakers are on the Lake Health power play. A big thanks to Lake Health. Five on four advantage now. I believe it's only the second power play opportunity for Menor today. Pestuka sends it over to Stuart Dant. Working it around the perimeter here of the zone. Around that blue line. Duncan's got it center. Travels right. Well, it gets tangled up there with Perks, but still able to feed the puck forward. Minute 17 left in the power play. Rumblebees will tap that back into Benner's defensive zone. Thanks to Chris Lewis, Rashawn Bailey, Cassie Mann, and Malia Harwood is all of Lake Health for providing their services and facilities. Dimitri Danik winds up. Stick save made there by the Rumblebees. And now they've got a man down there. That's Noskov. Can they get it to him? Howie takes himself, feeds it, and goes over the top of the net. Off the backboards. So that was a nice feed but it was pushed off a little too hard there from the Battle Creek offensive line. As Stuart Dan just got a little bit outskated that time. He's got to turn his body. <laughs> Meanwhile, his backtrack instead of trying to skate backwards and stay with the man, it seems like. Esri sends that one wide left off the boards. Eight minutes even left, and Farrington now drops it off to Morrow. Morrow's going to have a chance. He dumps it. Oh, I thought Morrow was going to take the shot. So did Esri. Esri wasn't waiting there in tow, but the Icebergers still a chance to reset it with 25 seconds left in his power play. And Moore didn't have the best angle, but I agree he should have shot it there. Diaz now dumped it back to Daniel. Daniel was looking for the deflection to Moore. Moore's been doing a good job hanging out in the slot the last couple of games with a lot of near goal opportunities looking for his sixth of the season. It feels like he's due, especially after he had that one called back last game against Dan Danville. And he would, would have given Menner the 3-2 lead. Instead, Danville took it 4-2 for the second night in a row. Dasher steadily... Rising in the Western Division, Diaz winds up. That one goes wide left. He's looking for his first goal for the Icebreakers. I don't think we realized at the time, but Diaz actually missed his first game of the season over the weekend. He was tied for the team leading games played. Now he's at 29. Teams played 30 games. And the Icebreakers lose out on the opportunity for that two minutes, and the power play expires. So 35 to 15 shot on goal advantage in favor. Of the icebreakers, Fanatics on hand here. Slam cheering them on up in the rink at Battle Creek. It would be BB Sting, but it's Slam here. And now it'll be Alves and Nada taking the draw. Closest the net of Jordan Brandt. Morrill, nice move, stick handles, passes man. Left circle winds up and just goes over the top of the net. Oh, Morrill did it there with his stick handle. That was a great move. He juked that B out of his skates on the left circle, but it went too high. Again, it feels like Morrow is coming so close every game. He's got to yes. put one home and get going again. So close for Alex Morrow with that 5-10-15 scoring line. Good for fifth most points of active icebreakers. 
6.33 remaining in the second period of play as we head towards the Labatt Blue second intermission. When we return from the intermission, we'll bring you the saves of the period brought to you by Vitamix right there. It's icing, though, against the home team. It's worth mentioning the icebreakers are on pace for a season high in shots right now. Their previous season high was 53, setting a 3-2 to two loss at home against Delaware on November 16th. Aaron there. Taylor stepped it up that night. That was a big night for him. And right now, Menner's at 36 with 626 left in the second period. Icebreakers now trying to clear it out of their own defensive zone. Team's back to full strength. They get it on the far boards. Now Howie takes it for the Bees in their own defensive zone. Still think it's a five and not a B on the front. They feed it over center ice. Soilus, big board up here at the other end. Wind up trying to tuck it in that corner. Nice job by Brandt to put a skate there in front of the net. Good feed to Crawford. Between the circles, he's bobbling it, and he couldn't get it off. That puck wouldn't stay flat there. Crawford had the speed, but the puck wouldn't stay down. And not the first breakaway chance for the icebreakers to come up empty tonight with Hudson on top of his game. 35 saves so far. Jurovic now, they finally clear it. Bounces off of the high stick there of Steele. Steele will flip it forward. That one goes out of play. With it being kids day today, we want to remind you about the kids club. Kids ages 5 to 16 are eligible to join the brand new Junior Icebreakers Kids Club where members receive a membership t-shirt and card, have special access to events with players, and will receive free admission with a paying adult during select games for the 2019-2020 season. Cost is just $15 per season per child. For more information, next time you're here, stop by the merchandise table or visit menoricebreakers.com. And in addition to the kids club, the junior icebreakers, the icebreakers officially launched their official booster club. Visit the merch table as well when you're here or menoricebreakers.com for more information. So it is 526 remaining left here in the second period of play. It was around this mark, minute mark in the first period when the icebreakers scored. I was actually at 542 when Peshtuka got the assist from Jurovic and put the icebreakers up one to nothing. No score yet here in the second period. And if you're a Rumblebee fan, you gotta be happy that you've kept this game at bay with all things considering having 20 less shots on goal. Yeah, and really in this league, goaltenders are a premium. And it's kind of amazing how many quality goaltenders they've had in Battle Creek, of course. Save percentages haven't really been great just because of the heavy workloads they face partly. But Hudson right now, 35 saves on 36 shots. It doesn't get much better than that. When the ice, uh, when the Rumblebees have trailed after either the first or second period, they have not won 0 for 22 in the, after the first, 0 for 26 at the second. The only win they've gotten was when they were tied after the first. Obviously a small sample size as far as the success goes. But I would say if you are Battle Creek, you are hanging in this 1-1-0, and if you can get to the Labatt Blue second intermission, still only trailing by one, that's not a terrible place to be for this young expansion team that joined last here in the FPHL. Alves was trying to find his man right circle Noskov, but couldn't get it to him. They had three Rumblebees kind of flanking behind the one Icebreaker defender, but the Icebreakers pushed up, were able to keep that puck in front of them and not let it get behind them. 440 remaining now in the second period of play. Icebreakers at the blue line. Feed it over to Diaz. Diaz winds up. He's looking for the deflection to Stewart Dan, trying to keep that two-game point streak going. One of three players once again. Oh, nice steal there by Noskov. Noskov's got plenty of speed, plenty of ice, and he couldn't get it. Closed out there at the last moment by Diaz and Brent. A good team effort between defender and goalie for Menner. That was almost a very, very costly turnover at the blue line by Diaz. Could have tied this game up easily. That's about the third one-on-zero breakaway the Rumblebees have had. Obviously, the Icebreakers haven't paid the ultimate price and had one put in on them, but the Rumblebees have been quick on that counterattack. 37-17 shot on goal advantage. You got Brody Duncan hanging out there, left blue line, but play tangled up there. And a whistle on the ice from the corner. Trying to figure out what that whistle was for. I didn't see exactly what it was. Maybe it was an issue with the net. I think it was, yeah, because it was stuck in that corner, so I didn't, couldn't quite see if there was a penalty. I don't believe so. I think it was just 
Hudson's net, they adjusted it. Didn't totally come off, but a little unhinged from its moorings. Now, face off right defensive circle in front of Hudson. Both guys a little bit jumpy there. Final four minutes of the second period of play. Menner with the 1-0 lead. Rumblebees looking for that quick counter again. Get over center ice. Howie winds up and nice glove knocked down there by Jordan Brent. And Brent has been impressive since having to take over for Austin Rodebush both times when he was injured. And then now with Rodebush being called up to the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. You know, Icebreakers haven't won any games since Brent took over, but it's really not his fault. You can't put it on him. He's played really well since taking over, especially last night or Saturday against Danville. Again, uh, 46 saves on 50 shots. He played well enough to give his team a chance to win. Jordan Brent, two and four, coming into this game. And a whistle against the Icebreakers there will be icing the call. Looking at branch numbers earlier in the season, he had a couple of games against Battle Creek. 6-1 Icebreakers win December 13th. He stopped 25 out of 26. And the next night, he stopped 18 out of 20 in a 6-2 win. So he has experience playing against this Rumble Beast team. So when you look at the schedule coming up, four of the next five games are away. Friday and Saturday, Carolina, 7.35 start Friday, 6.05 Saturday. Then Sunday, 3 p.m., another afternoon game against Carolina. And then two on the road to end January and go into February, Port Huron, before finally playing the River Dragons at home on Friday and Saturday, the 7th and 8th of February. 3.05 now remaining in the second period of play. The Icebreakers with possession of the puck get it into the neutral zone. Esri makes his way over center ice over to Farrington. McNary there to challenge him. Pushes Farrington behind the net. He'll have to swing around. Esri's hanging on slack. Tries to get it to him. Went for the deflection. Couldn't get it off the edge of his stick there. 2.42 remaining now. Pistuka will have to race and chase to get this one. Thanks again for listening on this Martin Luther King Jr. Monday matinee matchup. As the Rumblebees and Icebreakers in action, the only game in the FPHL today. It'll be two Wednesday games, including Tyler Urich possibly going up against his former team, longtime team. Was Urich ever on a team besides the Wolves? At least so. We'll have to get the fact check we'll team on that. Check that encyclopedia, that 1,200 page tome you have. Now, the Icebreakers behind their own net. Good move there by Noskov to keep it down here. He'll have to settle for sending it to the blue line, the Bush Anderson, and now the Icebreakers stole that pass. Pestuka flips it down the length of the ice now, 149 remaining. That is, that is a trade for the doozy, though. Would you say there's been very few trades, if any, that have been of that magnitude? Yeah, at this point now, that's two guys on your team, 106 points between them in terms of uh, Tyler Urich and Ahmed Mafus for the enforcers. So their depth is going to suffer, but having two guys like that on your team is so dangerous. Whistle on the ice here at the blue line, minute 25. Jared, they didn't hear it off here, but when you were talking about it the other day, it was actually just Saturday when you said, there's no way Tyler Urich will ever get traded. <laughs> no need to call me <laughs> so out. So you no had need. the jinx off just there no even. Need. And then the next game on a Monday afternoon, just the Battle Creek and men are playing, and all of a sudden... Trade comes down. Tyler Hurich to the Elmira Enforcers. His first season in the FPHL, 2015-2016 season, he played for the Danbury Titans. 100 points in 49 games, 50 goals, wow. 50 assists. And then Wolves since then? Every year since then he's been in Watertown. 96 points, 106 points last year, and he's already at 54. And with Mafus is the all-time FPHL score, uh, leading scorer. Nice job by Brandt to keep out on that. So I wonder where Urich ranks in all-time uh, points in the FPHL. Obviously, there's a big gap between Mafus and anyone else, but they probably have two of the top five if for sure, right? Yeah, I know for, for a fact that Port Huron has at least three of the top ten scorers of all time in the league, and Dalton J. Giuliano and Matt Robertson, and Matt Graham might be on that list as well. Yeah, I know Matt Robertson picked up his 300th point here earlier this year in November um, against the Icebreakers. So... Meanwhile, two icebreakers in the box. It's Stepan Jurovic and Brody Duncan. Jurovic for a minute 38. Duncan just joined them for two minutes. Duncan spent a lot of time in the box the last couple of days. Yeah, a bit of an untimely penalty here. Give Rumbies another lengthy five on three. Second time this game, they had a minute 42 
Yeah, just in the first five minutes of the game. Five on four. One minute remaining, so these could both carry over to next period, but this is your chance for Battle Creek to tie this one up. Five on three this late in only a 1-0 game. Slashing was the call against Duncan. And that one bounces off of Brant's glove. Good job by Brant to keep it out. We'll have it to you uh, when we return from the second intermission. We'll tell you about the uh, points. We'll have a bit of a chance then to bring that to you. A lot of things going on here today. Now, Rumblebee Stone found Crystal, was about to wind up, but the net came off. An untimely time for that to come unhinged for Battle Creek. Looks like Brant a little bit too deep in the net there. His skate knocked it off. Crystal was about to smash that one towards him. We'll never know what the result of that one would be. So Tyler Urich, he's almost... <laughs> so pretty soon they will have the top two leading scorers of all time in the FPHL because Urich is only seven points behind Justin Levac, who has 363 points. Urich has 356. And, and Urich is... Daniel Justin Browson is actually right behind uh, Tyler Urich. He has 354 points in his career. And then that's the Prowlers, Robertson and Dalton Jay. So they're going to have... Most likely the top two, well, because Levac is not in, in the league anymore, is he? Uh, no, I don't believe so. We'd, we'd hear about it. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I, was, I was guessing. I, he, I don't remember calling his name last year either. He's actually up in the SPHL now. With Our last season was last season of pro hockey, it looks like. He was with the Making Mayhem last year. Last played in the FPHL in 2018 with Danville. So, the, you know, Juric is going to score... 10 more points or 11 more points this season, you know, barring something out of his control. So they're going to have the top two point scores all time on the same team. And how about this? The Rumblebees capitalize on the five on three, flanking that left side. No net off this time. It goes in the back of it. And the yellow and black attack have tied this one up at one with only 3.5 seconds left in the period. Yeah, that's where that penalty comes back to bite you. You can't be head into the box as often as the icebreakers do because any team in this league is going to take advantage of it, including Battle Creek. And now we've got a whole new game heading into the third period. That is such a tough way to end the period. With only 3.5 seconds, the double penalty was tough. But now, to give up the goal with only 3.5 seconds left, we'll get the official confirmation on the scoring for you here momentarily. This one's going to wind down. And Menor gets shut out that period. Battle Creek ties it up at one. It's going to be an exciting third period. Anything can happen on this Monday. Tyler Urich is an Elmira enforcer, and the Battle Creek Rumblebees and Menor Icebreakers are tied at one. Do we get official confirmation on that uh, score? There was a lot of bees hanging out there left side. I think we're waiting for the uh, goal announcement here, but Battle Creek's going to head to a 57-second power play as well to open the third period, so it's on momentum right now for Battle Creek and the Rumblebees. And got to tip your cap to them right now because they only have 13 skaters available and they're playing like they have 30 skaters available. A ton of energy. What's almost incredible is the Rumble Bees, granted it was a 5-on-3, a good chance to capitalize, but they didn't score on any of their 1-on-0s. They were so close, but got closed out at the last second. But here they score on the 5-on-3 with only 3.5 seconds left. Having battled the whole game and the Icebreakers do not end that period strong. Well, they haven't announced the official scoring confirmation yet. It was Luciani who scored that one on the back side, I believe. So after a couple of uh, breakaways earlier in the game, Luciani gets on the board. So Luciani, that would be his fifth goal. He's got a 5-6-11 scoring line if we get the official uh, confirmation on that for you. You don't believe me, wow. Oh, I believe you, but I was wondering on the assist. So it's Adam Howie on the assist along with Mark Steele, who's also been very active, the three of them. And that is good enough to tie it up for Battle Creek. Jared, third period, this is going to be interesting. If you're Coach Ian Duncan and you guys are on a five-game slide, what is the conversation right now? Well, looking at it from a stats perspective, everything was lined up for the Icebreakers to have a big night offensively. Of course, Battle Creek down to, what is their sixth or seventh? A uh, group of goaltenders now, it seems like on the year, they've had so many goalies come in and out, but Morgan Hudson having one of his best games as a professional. Saw 36 out of 37 shots so far, and right now the Icebreakers just having a tough time breaking out of this offensive drought that's lasted over the last 
two, three weeks or so. So we're going to go to the Labatt Blue second intermission. When we return, we'll bring you the saves of the period brought to you by Vitamix and the exciting conclusion in the third period here at Menor Ice Arena. Keep it right here. We'll be back for the final period.
Welcome back to Menor Ice Arena where the score is Battle Creek 1, Menor 1. The Rumblebees add one late with 3.5 seconds left and tie this one all up as we get set to put 20 minutes back on the clock. Jared, you look back first period. Yuri Peshtuka picks up his first goal as a Menor Ice breaker in second point from Stepan Jurovic. But the Rumblebees add one late. What do you expect now as we start the third period? After the ice break, you can't come out flat-footed again like you did in that second period. They really did not play well for large chunks of that period, and Morgan Hudson was on top of his game, which didn't make matters any easier for them. So we're going to find out very shortly what is the case. The Rumblebees have a very small sample size, but when they have been tied after the second period, they are 1-0. When they've led after the second period, they're actually 0-1. But specifically, in only one instance, they have tied after the second period and they won. Menor's not going to want that to happen from their end, trying to get off a five-game slide. And for the icebreakers, you've got to stay out of the box this period. Already given the Rumble Bees seven power plays in this game through two periods, and that was an issue, and Danville gave the Dashers ten power plays on the night. Got to stay out of the box. As good as your penalty kill is, you can't win like that. Eventually, one of those breaks are going to break down, and... That was a five on three. That, that we've seen that a couple of times recently where there's been compounding penalties just 10, 20 seconds into the first penalty. And that's tough to stave off. Not only do you have the five on three and two man disadvantage, but now you've got a goalie who's played less time. So it's not like you have Rodebush who's done most of the work back there and has seen more five on threes as that's a tall tale even for him. But so you've got your, your, your new goalie working his way in and two man disadvantage. It's a lot to have to expect to do right. Yeah, and those five-on-threes for a minute 40-plus, those are usually quite rare in hockey. You don't see them too often, but the Icebreakers gave the Thermal Bees two of those chances in this game, and they capitalized on the most recent one. Don't forget our next home game is Sunday, January 26th, as the Carolina Thunderbirds come to town for Sunday Fun Day. Mental Icebreakers games are a great way to spend time with family on the weekend. The Icebreaker Cafe concession stand will be having specials on their hot dogs, popcorn, slushies, and hot chocolate. Stop by the Icebreakers Cafe for a bite to eat during the game. Game time is 3 p.m. and the doors open at 2 p.m. Now let's take a look real quick on the saves of the period brought to you by Vitamix. And Battle Creek had 22 saves on goal, did Hudson, and 10 for Brant that period. And that's how we roll in to the third period. That's brought to you by Vitamix, as always, fueling you from practice to game day and helping you feed your life. And now we're getting ready for the third period. The Rumblebees will once again move left to right in their yellow jerseys with black and white trim, black numbers, and honeycomb decal. And the Icebreakers will move right to left. Double blue, dark blue jerseys, light blue trim, white numbers will move right to left. 57 seconds left in the penalty kill. Slam gets the Fanatics into a hit here at Menor Ice Arena. So Brody Duncan just under a minute more in the box. And the third period has begun. Once again, thanks for joining us here on this Monday afternoon. And it's been an entertaining game so far. All tied up at one. Alves, former icebreaker. He'll feed that one up into the corner. Now behind the net, glove down. Rumblebees trying to get this one to the slot. Feeds it back to the blue line. Steele winds up, look for the deflection, went off the back glass. Volf will chase it down. He is boarded up by Pashtuka there, not letting him move an inch. Fanatics trying to will their team into this one. Haven't scored since 542 remaining in the first period. Steele gets it. Nice soccer trap there with the skate. And he'll feed it over to Stone. Stone goes wide right. Swung around the Steele and a U though. Steele feeds it up. Stolen there. It's Farrington. Look at this. Icebreaker's on the chase. The penalty killed off. Dunk it. The more, more to dunk it. Dunk it between the circles. Back in the net. And the Icebreaker's take it to the Oh, Jared, you couldn't have had the penalty kill kill off at an any better time. Brody Duncan skated out of the box. The three-way pass, he feeds it back in between the circles to the left corner. And that worked out perfect for Brody Duncan coming out of that, uh, come out of the penalty box just as Farrington was sprung for that breakaway. And then Nate Farrington played it perfectly. Instead of trying to force that shot from a tough angle, he dropped it back to Duncan who found Morrow on the, on the back side and 
Morrow fed Duncan for the open look at the net and Brody capitalized for his seventh of the year. And it's a big one right now, a much needed goal for the icebreakers who couldn't find Twine in the third period on Saturday night. If you remember, as Danville had two goals in that period. And for Brody Duncan, if you want to talk about making up for a couple too many penalties, he leaves the box and makes it happen there. No goal. Calling goalie interference. Wow, and the crowd here is speechless after the three-way move, Farrington, Morrow, and Duncan out of the box. It is called back. I mean, looking back at the replay, Steele shoved Farrington into the crease. That's not goaltender interference. I mean, that is a that's a tough break. Punch. Second, third period in a row where they get a game-changing goal called back, and this time, I'm not sure about the call. That is a very tough break. I don't think the Fanatics here are happy. So go back to a 1-1 game, and that was a lot of excitement all for, for nothing there as Brody Duncan put it in between the circles. But it is 1-1. One one. got to play with one it is. Esri winds up, and the bread basket save made there. We'll see how they respond this time. Last, uh, last time that happened, it wasn't a good response. They kind of fell asleep the rest of the period and looked like they were feeling sorry for themselves, but you can't do that. you still got a game to play, 18-21 here in the third period. That is a big change of momentum. 18-19 remaining here in the period. And the Rumblebees get it up to Noskov. Tangled up with Crawford here. McNary joins in as this away. Everyone trying to free that puck. Rumblebees with new lease on life here as they scored with only 3.5 seconds left in the second period of play. And uh, that one called back by Menner in the 18 minute mark. It was the 18 minute mark of the third period, Jared, uh, on Saturday. It was 18-25 uh, that got scratched off and now 18-53. So both times Icebreakers look to start the third period off after that intermission conversation on a better foot. But that uh, waved off here. Icebreakers with a 14 shot and goal advantage still. That one unable to keep in Battle Creek's possession. 38 to 24, but the most important number on the scoreboard is we're all tied up at one. Still a lot of time left. We'll see how the icebreakers respond. As you have to play with the official say, NATO will send that one off the safety net. Don't forget the icebreakers officially launched their official booster club. Visit the merchandise table or menoricebreakers.com for more information. Wingate by Wyndham LaMalfa is the preferred hotel for the Menor Icebreakers. Visitors coming from in and out of town can take advantage of special room rates when mentioning the Menor Icebreakers corporate rate when making reservations. And it was Preston Products bringing you first responders night on Saturday. That was a fun night. Ezri winds up and he finds Twine there. Mark Ezri gives the Icebreakers the two to one. What a wild start to the third period, Jared. Yeah, we talked about, we wanted to see how the icebreakers would respond to that one getting called back and a couple of sarcastic uh, points to the net. The icebreakers are calling that one a goal for themselves. 17-23 is the official score. Esri from right side puts it to the top left corner. So there you go, you were looking for Mark Esri to maybe add to that offense. He almost scores again, but gets pushed down against the backboards as he had a 5-11-16 scoring line coming in, picks up his sixth goal at 17th point, and they respond just a minute and a half later. So a big, big play by Mark Esri to get that momentum back for the guys in double blue. And Stuart Damp and Farrington on the assist. So Stuart Damp will keep that point streak alive at three now. Yeah, Stuart Danson picking up his play over the last few games. He was pretty quiet earlier in the season, but he's starting to come alive now. And Nate Farrington had a decent point streak going over the last couple of weeks. He had picked up a 1-4-5 scoring line over a couple weeks. So two to one is the score. Men are back in the lead.
So now, Battle Creek looking to push it across the blue line, trailing my only one. A good effort today from the visiting Rumblebees with plenty of hockey left. Now Henry Berger crosses both blue lines, crosses right circle, wind up, goes hard off the back glass. Now Crawford chasing it down. Rumblebees will get their first nice stick handle to feed it to Alvis at the right side of the blue line. Cut back by Alvis. Alvis showing off some nice skate work there, but it'll go wide left. 39 to 24, shot on goal advantage. That one deflects off of the pads there of Brandt. Nice shot by Alvis. Couple good moves down here in the Icebreakers defensive zone. Wind up shot there, stick save off of Tim Perks. And here comes Dimitri Daniel. Daniel crosses into the neutral zone. Icebreakers on the change. They got Stuart Dant left circle, tries to get them, goes wide left. Now, Stuart Dant behind the net, pickpocketed by a Rumble B defender. I believe that's Crystal. Pinkowski winds up and bounces off the left pad of Hudson. And Hudson's had a strong night tonight. 40 shots on goal coming his way with 38 saves. The Ottawa, Ontario native has had a strong performance. Icebreakers will chase it down in their own defensive zone now. They'll feed that one the length of the ice behind the net, and that'll draw the call against the Icebreakers at 14.44 remaining here in the period. Rumblebees trying to stick in this one. Plenty of time to go as we approach the midway point of the third period. Icebreakers respond from the goal. The goal waved off one and a half minutes later. Marquez puts it in and gives the Icebreakers the lead back at 2-1. to one. Rumblebees now on the near on the far boards. Howie tangled up with a couple of icebreakers. Jerovic and Esri. Menner will push it forward up to Esri. Now he skates along that board line, winds up behind the net, goes wide. Thanks again for listening here on YouTube.com. The long shot from away bounces off the backboards. Newest icebreaker to take to the ice. Rumblebees working on the near boards. Nobody up there though, and Farrington will be able to cycle it back to Pastuka, back to Farrington. Farrington crosses blue line into the neutral zone. Nice center ice pass to Esri. He's also got Morrow in tow, but goes forward to Farrington. Farrington couldn't get it off the top of his stick. 13.52 remaining now. Rumblebees stuck in that corner. They'll rattle one off post. Still in play, and Icebreakers will clear it behind the net in the U. Now Esri crosses into the neutral zone. He's got Morrow ahead of him, who's had a strong night. Despite no point, Esri stick handles passes. Man finally cut off at the last second by former Icebreaker Connor McNary, who had a nice defensive stance there. Rumblebees on the counter. Being boarded up there by Duncan. Rumblebees able to work it forward. Duncan with the stick save. And now he sends the quick pass outlet to Morrow. Morrow over the blue line. Morrow will send it right to the speedy. Crawford gets the shot off, but it deflects off an incoming Rumblebee defender. And that one goes off the safety net. Duncan might have caught a puck off the hand. It's like Crawford and the Rumblebee player. I can't see a number of both. Uh, a little slow to get up after that collision. Both of them were... Uh, they kind of collided and fell and both slid right into the board. It's pretty hard. I think it might be McNary, but from the front it looks like number five. <laughs> I mean, the Icebreakers fans uh, were a little upset at first. They, they thought that McNary or whoever the Rumble Beach player is was laying on Crawford, but he's hurt. It wasn't really his fault. And we'll see if we can get the back of Jersey. Hopefully okay there. It is Connor McNary. As he seems to be fine in a bit of, bit of discomfort as he will head to the B's bench, the Orlando, Florida native and former icebreaker. So 13 minutes left here in the third period of play. The icebreakers with a 2-1 lead. It was Yuri Pestuka scoring in the first period and then it was scoreless until 3.5 seconds remaining in the second period. And that's when the Rumblebees tied this one up at one as Luciano scored off the double assist from Howie and Mark Steele and then Esri scored off the Stewart, Dan and Farrington feed to put themselves back up at the 17 minute mark up two to one as we near the midway point here of the 
third period. I want to remind you, it's Mo Monday. Go to Mo's for burrito specials that'll make you feel like it's a lazy Sunday, even though it isn't. So end the weekend with Mo Monday today and visit us at our two mentor locations, South Euclid or Mayfield stores. 42 to 26, the shot on goal advantage in favor of the guys at Double Blue looking to get off a five game slide. Coming into today at 13, 15, 0 and 2. And with Elmira improving and making that trade, and Watertown and Danbury ahead of them, men are looking to get back to some winning ways. A whistle on the ice now. Yeah, this is a very important one for the Icebreakers to hold on to because a huge stretch of tough games coming up. They got the three games set against Carolina, two games against Port Huron, then a couple of games at home against Columbus, and the River Dragons have been playing their best hockey of the season as of late. And they got Port Huron again, and then that tough Elmira team with Jurich and Mafuz now. Yeah, then we haven't Elmira played again, Elmira and then Port Huron <laughs> again. It just doesn't really end with those stretch of uh, tough opponents. So, See a lot of Elmira and Port Huron coming up. That one goes behind that. I want to thank our great sound crew, Larry Rommel, El Moon, and Lawrence Rommel, who worked so hard on all those great graphics and keeping everyone entertained here at Menorah Arena. Now McNary trying to flip that one for Duvalf. Esri skates between the circles, looking for another shot on goal. That one bounces off the stick of an incoming Rumblebee. That was McNary. You can't actually tell who the Rumblebee is unless you get a look at the back of their jersey. Uh, that was McNary that was making the nice defensive deflection there for Esri could get that shot on goal. 11.29 <coughs> remaining in the third period. Volf will wind up. That one goes deflecting off the left pad there of Jordan Brandt looking for his first win since Rodebush called up. He picked up a couple of wins when Rodebush was down with an injury a few weeks ago, but now looking for a win as the main goalie for the Icebergers. Morrill fires that one off the pads of Hudson. Now Tim Perks gets it back blue line to Duncan. Duncan winds up and sent that one between the circles, but the stick save made there by McMa McNary. McNary since taking that hard board up, has a couple of nice defensive stances there in the slot for the Rumblebees. Looking back to that Rumblebee scoring chance, Jacob Wolf has been a really strong signing for this Battle Creek team. He's got three goals in six games so far, and that's on a team that averages less than two goals per night, so he's been uh, responsible for a good chunk of the offense since he joined the team. So Stuart Dant continues his point streak tonight at three now. Blake Nada also came in with two, Stephen Fowler with two, but currently out on an injury. So Stuart Dant, the longest streak currently going. Tickets for upcoming icebreaker teams may be purchased at the door, or you can secure your- Ryan Alves, again, former icebreaker in Danville Dasher with a 7-9-16 scoreline. He had a lot of chances early for the Rumblebees. You know, there have been some goaltenders not necessarily starters even, that have been, just had the icebreakers number this season. Hudson seems to be one of them. He stopped 19 out of 20, of course, in that relief appearing, appearance uh, with Delaware earlier in the season. And tonight he stopped 42 out of 44 and having a great night. At this point, Battle Creek may be trying to play for extra time. The Rumblebees and Delaware Thunder, two of the four expansion teams. That one rattles almost into the net off the skate of Hudson are the only two teams this year not to play overtime. Of course, Menor would like to avoid the overtime. Haven't had any luck yet this year. They've gone to shootouts where they haven't won, but also don't want to lose that two to one lead here as we're approaching the 10 minute mark in the third period. Rumblebees picking up speed, cross into the neutral zone. They'll get the feet up left side to Soilus. Soilus dumps it back off, and they're trying to get it slot to Luciano. And I believe that one is going to be waved off. The light went off, but it seems like it was immediately waved off. Soilus skated right to that corner of the goal for the deflection. But I believe it has been waved off immediately after it scored this time. Uh, so for once, the icebreakers are going to benefit from a goal getting waved off. It's been an intense third period. 10 one now remaining in the third period. Fanatics reacting to that call here. Santa Rumble be knocked in with his hand. I was wondering through the official explanation. I wasn't, couldn't really tell on the play in real time. So 9.54, we are under the 10 minute mark. Crawford was tangled up to find Jackson Tucker. Tucker 
Feeds to Crawford. Crawford centers it to Nada. And the nice glove save made there by the lefty Hudson. And a couple of college teammates there teaming up with Tucker and Crawford almost picking up a point and almost continuing Nada's streak there on that three-way pass. Yeah, nice looking play, but I don't think Blake Nada got off a very good shot. It went right into the breadbasket of Morgan Hudson. I want to thank a few of our corporate sponsors. Marco's Pizza with locations at Men on the Lake, Willoughby, Painesville, and South Euclid. Kemp LLC, Conway Land Title, Toe Drag Apparel, CSP Insurance, Wingate by Wyndham Hotel, Market Street Family Restaurant, Global Real Estate Advisors, Spuddy's Tavern, Vitamix, Homeline, an online real estate company, Lake Erie Marine Sales, Mosaic Properties LLC, Stadium Grill, Preston Products LLC, Bethlehem Christmas Lights Park, Kana Winery, Habco Tools and Development, McGarry and Sons, Nova Southeastern University, Auburn Career Center, Menorice Arena, Fitness First, Ganley Village Automotive, JD Cleaners, and Burger IM. Thank you to our great corporate sponsors. Also want to thank our off-ice officials, Scott Tennant, Daniel Savitz, Greg Butella, Greg Kopp, Fred Hayer, Russ Arala, Joe Knight and Brandon Cottis, Taylor Ruyer on game day operations, Frank Schmidt operations intern through Mentor High School business program, Jared Tennant communications manager and color commentary alongside me, and Casey Healy on the video stream intern through the Auburn Career Center interactive multimedia technology program. Great staff on hand here at Mentor Ice Arena. Daniel sends a nice wrist shot in that deflects off the pads of Hudson. Now in the slot, was looking for a deflection off Crawford's skate. A loose stick there, and the Rumblebees trying to push it through the neutral zone. 9.29 remaining. The Icebreakers with a 46-29 shot on goal advantage. And the Rumblebees down a lot of guys today. Only about a dozen take it to the ice. Had some transportation issues, but they made it here, and they have made it a heck of a game here on this Monday matinee matchup. Yeah, I got to give credit to Battle Creek. They're playing... A really good game, really good defensive hockey overall. Of course, 46 shots on goal, but I feel like Hudson's had a lot of easy saves, not to discredit him at all, but his defense has been playing well in front of him for the most part. Yeah, this has got to be one of the better games for Battle Creek this year. Of course, their win over Elmira, the one where they ended up losing to Elmira 6-5 was another strong one. A couple of tough efforts with Carolina where it wasn't exactly as close, but blocking 70 shots now. Not blocking this one! The feed to Esri! More Esri! And Moro's pumped up for his teammate there off of the feed. Mark Esri with a two goal third period. And you wondered how they would respond. They have responded with spades. Esri, two goals over the last eight minutes, gives the Icebreakers a three to one lead. You know, Mark Esri was a man on a mission on that play. He really created that chance. Was, uh, Went through a couple of Rumblebees on the right side and got the puck up to Morrow. And from there, it was just a great little burst of speed to get to the net and finish on the back end on Hudson. And credit to Alex Morrow on the feed there. Esri in the slot. That is huge for Mark. We have been wondering, Jared, who would be able to step it up and Jurovic picks up his uh, second assist as well. But we were wondering, Jared, with Conway out, especially for today, but Butita called up, Moscow traded. You're wondering where will that offense, somebody had to get out of that mid-range, and Esri came in with five goals, now with seven, maybe trying to return to last season form where he led the team with a 23-28-51 scoring line. Yeah, like you said, 50-point scorer last year, and he's a guy at the Icebreakers need to step up, especially in the coming weeks, and he's getting off to a good start here. He missed a few games this season, suspensions and injuries, but he's a guy that they need to get going, especially with the, uh, the lack of scores with call-ups and trades as of late. Now it's Duncan crossing left circle. 8.30 remaining in this one, and Fanatic's very happy, as was Mo and Ezri. Everyone's celebrating on the ice there as they are looking to get back to winning ways. Sebastian Crystal, meanwhile, somehow got a delay of game penalty. Yeah, we, we totally missed that one. Focused on the goal. It wasn't crystal clear for us, but he is in the well box. Done. That's the rest of the night. 120 minutes left on the uh, one minute and 20 seconds left in the Lake Cal power play. 8:03 left in this game. I love when I get the Jared Tennant stamp of approval. 
that means so much, Jared. Brody. Not often, not often, but every once in a while you hit one right on the nail. Especially making up for the fact that we had no clue that Crystal went to the box. I'll be the first to admit that in the goal scoring and being excited that we got some offensive production going. And uh, Mark Ezri, Vice Burger can hold out a strong candidate as someone we definitely would like to talk to about this momentum swing here in the third period after this game. If the Asperger's hold on here, and they got a 47 to 30 shot on goal advantage. Rumblebee still have a chance to pull back in this one. Tim Perks now has it on the outside of that right circle. <clears throat> He'll feed it back to Diaz at the blue line. Now goes behind Tim Perks. He's got Haytham Away down there. Be interesting to see what Haytham Away will, will bring to the team. I haven't quite got a total grasp on it. He got some shots off on goal close in. In Dan against Danville and a few today. For what it's worth, his one goal in the season when he was with the Prowlers when came in this building. Now Alex Morrow, he's going to have a chance. He tips it down and flips it forward to Esri, who was looking for a third period hat trick. That would have been an impressive accomplishment there, and it would have been to, from Morrow again. Rumblebees have Alvis at the blue line, who loves scoring in this building, has yet to do so today. He'll feed it slot. It goes just out of reach of his man. And slowly but surely, Icebreaker's knocking on the door. 50 shots on goal today. Yeah, three short of their season highs. We mentioned before, 53 against Delaware on November 16th. That was a 3-2 loss to the Thunder. Aaron Taylor pulled down 51 saves in a, one of the better goalie performances we've seen here at Menor Ice Arena this year. Noskov frees that one for the slot, but Morrow will come away with it. And dump it down behind the net, behind to Farrington. 6.02 remaining now. Blue line out of Jurovic, who has a two-point night. That one deflects off the backboards. Stepan Jurovic coming into his own now. When you look at his stat line, now came in with a 2-1-3 line, now at a 2-3-3 line. That's his first multi-point game of the season. So he had the feed in the first period and then was involved on that last score as well. Behind the net, Pishtuka sends it around. He's able to get up to Nada. Nada takes the shoulder hit, but still pushes it forward to Crawford. He's got a couple of Bs to contend with, though. And Jurovic will dump it down. 5.23 left. Coach Ian Duncan looking on, trying to get his squad that win, get back to winning ways in what has become an even tougher Eastern Division as of late. Good forecheck here by the Bs. And you haven't seen too much forechecking by the Rumble Bees tonight but it almost got them a nice shot on goal there. At the end of the day, when you got 13 skaters available, you can't commit too much to the forecheck. You guys just get gassed too quickly. Yeah, the Rumblebees have definitely had to contend with a lot of different things. They make no excuses about anything. They continue to battle through, but obviously some difficulties presented. That one goes wide left. Now, good stick move there by Brandt to extend it back out into play. Chipped in the air, and Nada will send a good pass right to left. He'll get that up to Stuart Dant. Stuart Dant's going to be able to cross through a circle. Oh, a nice stick move there made by Crystal. Out of the box and makes that play to help his goalie not get that one on zero. Now a wind up for the blue line. That was from Haytham Awade and it's deflected out. Awade seems to like some of the blue line shots. Gets that little steam behind his wrist shots, at least from the few games we've seen from him so far. Duncan sends it forward to a fast moving away. Away will get it to Jackson Tucker. Tucker looking for his options, surveying the field, and that one will go behind Duncan and the Rumblebees trying to avoid the four check here. Icebreaker's trying to close out and get the victory here on this Monday afternoon. Duncan now from the circle sends it slot. Almost away. Would have had his first goal on the deflection, but a heads up play by Hudson. That yeah, great job by Hudson moving from left to right there to Rob Away. Just get get in the right position to make that save. Now think about this, Jared. We've said how hard it is with Jordan Brandt stepping in to try to fill the spot for uh, Austin Rodebush, but then you've got the Rumblebees have traded, or not traded necessarily, but they have had so many different goalies take to the box for them. And having it, that changes, you know, everything, you know, trying to get that guy into the fold. They've had it numerous times this season. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think their best goalie this season is now a Carolina Thunderbird. Jake Mullen has back-to-back -back shutouts for That's Carolina, one over the Icebreakers. And him and Eisenhower, former Icebreaker, they had multiple times where they had to contend with 60 and 70-plus shots, doing their best to keep their team in it. Eisenhower, currently injured, will most likely 
resume one of the top roles for Battle Creek upon his return, but Jake Mullen doing good for Carolina. Carolina has, has had some good luck with goalies. Henry Dill has been very staunch back there in the nest for the Thunderbirds the last two seasons. Of course, it was Christian Pavlos last year setting a ton of franchise records for the Thunderbirds, and now it's Patrick Polivka, Frankie McClendon, and there's a Mullen as well now. <laughs> I don't know the if they've had one. a bad goalie. Plus, with that defense in front of you, it's tough to look bad as a goaltender. And they can score, too. You look at their goals allowed versus scores given up, it's an impressive gap. So 3-10 remaining. Icebreakers one shot away from 50. Now Howie's looking to get a shot of his own. Was looking for, actually, his teammate there for the deflection. That would have been Stavros Soilis, but he couldn't get it out. Icebreakers boxed him out. 2.57 remaining in this Monday afternoon contest. Our next game will be in the afternoon, but it'll be a Sunday, 3 p.m. start. And we'll join uh, right before 3 o'clock. Crawford gets tripped down. I believe the call will be going against the Rumble Bees here. It looks like Mark Steele will go to the box. He's had a nice game in the transition of offense to defense tonight, but will find himself in the box for the next couple of minutes. Most, that'll most likely just about do with only 2.47 to go here. Rumble Bees will be on the penalty kill for probably two minutes. Be tough for them to come back in this one. Tripping will be the call against Mark Steele. Shouldn't say anything though. Got to knock on wood here. Yeah, Jared. Should we just throw our papers in there? There it goes. The, uh, the five-game losing streak. <laughs> Can't, nothing's a guarantee. Thanks again for joining us on this Monday afternoon on YouTube.com. Your home and away home for all Mineral Icebreakers games. Whether you're listening in Battle Creek, Michigan, Mineral Ohio, anywhere in between or beyond. Center now. Esri sends it to. Henry Berger, a big thank you again to Lake Health as the icebreakers on the power play for providing training facilities and a great medical staff and athletic trainers. Brody Duncan at the blue line feeds it up to Esri. Esri to Morrow. Morrow crosses that right circle and stick goes flying in the air. Brody Duncan will chase it down. Alex, I don't know what happened there. Stick just left yeah, it. It's broken half. On that little wrist shot. Pinkowski gets the shot off, and Ezri was going for the rebound, but the Rumblebees now have a yet another fast break opportunity. Berger cuts him down, but the shot gets off, and guess who it is? Oh, uh, it's not Ryan. I thought it was Ryan Alves. I saw the six, and I thought he usually doesn't leave this arena without scoring, but it is Jacob Wolf, and a shorthanded goal for the Rumblebees with a minute 54 remaining now makes this a 3-2 game. See, now I'm nervous because I shouldn't have said that. I think we both know I shouldn't have said that. And coming into this game, Battle Creek had one shorthanded goal on the season. So I thought I thought we were sitting pretty, but you know. You never say stats. Rumblebees, like that, uh, they think otherwise. So it's one goal game, 154 to go here. Case in point, go back and watch the early 90s Super Bowl, and the Bills kicker was like perfect the whole year and missed the wide right, infamous moment. Hockey gods just punished me there. Hopefully they uh they think that's enough. This goes to uh, overtime, Jared. I believe that is on you. Yeah, it is. I'll probably have to quit. Or at least <laughs> I might be fired, one of the two. Or at least by everybody most. Because it is Mo Monday, after all. So Wolf got it from McNary. McNary's first point as a Rumble B, if I'm not mistaken. Good job for Connor assist. McNary. His fourth game with the team, first assist. And Wolf picks up the goal. That is his fourth goal, fourth point of the season. So now minute 13 and it's only a one goal game. Away between the circles. Look for the deflection, Stuart Dent. Perks is there as well, but the Rumblebees keep it out of the back of the net. Icebreakers four checking. Now they realize there's one minute remaining and they need to keep this 3-2 lead alive. Rumblebees trying to feed it forward to Soilis, but D D Diaz, excuse me, will dial it up and get there first. And the power play expires, but Pretty lackluster one there for Menares. Gave up the shorthand to goal. Now Soilis, teams back to full strength. 51 shots on goal for Menares. A whistle there in the far corner. Can't quite see what that was, but we'll bring that to you momentarily. Hudson's now out of the net, so the Rumblebees will have the six on five advantage for the final 38 seconds or so. So the Rumblebees take a timeout, Jared. It's three to two with 37.2 seconds left. If you're Battle Creek, what's the strategy here? got to get pucks to the net you know obviously it's been a little bit of a struggle but you have a power play goal already in this game a little bit less space with the six on five but you've shown you can score on the man advantage men are looking to get off the slide battle creek looking to get off the slide both teams looking for their second win of the new year battle creek looking for their second win overall 
Icebreakers looking for win number 14. 37.2 seconds remain. You wonder if that's enough time. Well, 3.5 seconds was enough left in the second period when the Rumble Bees scored then on the goal from Marco Luciani, the Toronto, Ontario, Canada native. So we'll see if Menor can keep it out of the back of the net and Jordan Brandt can pick up his third win and Menor can get back to its winning ways. But the Rumble Bees hungry to get their second win in franchise history. We'll see. They both won last on Friday, January 3rd. The, both teams only win of the new year and Battle Creek's only win in franchise history at this point. But they have been battling hard as they have today. We'll do a face off from the right defensive circle closest Brant. These breakers don't have an empty net goal on the year, but they're looking for their first one here. They've had a couple scored against us. Five on the year, actually, five empty net goals. That one against Danville was a killer the other night. Yeah, that, that took the momentum right out of the Jesse building. Jesse Nader with a magnet to the right post, and you just couldn't believe it. So 20 seconds left now. Battle Creek's got it down here. Elvis trying to feed it to the slot. He had a man down there. That was Volf trying to get his second goal in a couple of minutes. 11 seconds left. Rumblebee's behind the net. Eight seconds left behind the net, cleared down. Esri's got a fast break. He could get a hat trick here. He could end the game and he puts it in! Goal for Mark Esri! The icing on the cake! Icebreakers take a 4 2 lead with 0.5 seconds left. That's what a puck looks like going in an empty net. I almost forgot what it was like, but Mark Esri with his. First hat trick of the season. Icebreaker's first hat trick, hat trick since Declan Conway had one against these same bees on December 13th. But it's good to see Mark really uh, jump starting his offense here. He only had five goals heading into this game. Wow, we were asking for offensive production. Who would step it up? And Mark Esri answers the call today. What a finish here, Jared. And Battle Creek, credit to them, had multiple chances down there. They had played hard. They got some shots off. They were working it around. But the Icebreakers, good job by the back line to get it down there. Hats off to the Rumble Bees on a gutsy performance. But the Icebreakers will improve to 14, 15, 0 and 2 on the backs of a Mark Esri hat trick. Yeah, like we said, much needed victory for the Icebreakers with the tough stretch of games coming up here. But hats off to the Rumble Bees. They played a great game. By like Morgan Hudson in goal, he had, I'd, I'd say it's his best start as a professional. I have to look back at the numbers, but he had several big saves and pivotal moments in this game. Well, this was a fun one, Jared. I think everybody here had a, a good time at Menorice Arena. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. Again, hats off to Battle Creek, who continues to improve here in the FPHL. They pick up the loss today. Good sportsmanship shown between the two teams as this one finishes up. It's actually the last time these two teams will play the regular season, but for Menor, Coach Duncan and his squad, they get a much, much needed win. It wasn't easy, but they got it done, and I think the most telltale sign of it all, if you are an Icebreaker fan, is the fact that someone began to step it up offensively, and this was in the absence of Declan Conway on the ice tonight. And I threw the room will be a little bit of an encouraging game considering how short-handed you are. Only 13 skaters available and had to sign a local mentor player, Justin Vance, to just to have enough bodies on the ice for Good tonight's to game. So hopefully when they get uh, back to full strength, they can start stringing some wins together, at least uh, compete with some of these top teams in the FPHL. Good to see some good sportsmanship and camaraderie between these teams. You know, McNary and Elvis, former uh, players for the uh, Icebreakers last year, Elvis and Esri talking up, chatting, you know, this was just a, a, a pretty quality game where overall played well on both sides, pretty clean. And Battle Creek again continues to improve, but the Icebreakers pick up the win and go to 14, 15, 0 and 2. They head to Carolina down to Winston-Salem at the Fairgrounds Annex for two and Friday, Saturday. And we'll be back on Sunday, fun day. Hopefully we'll have as much fun as we did on this Mo Monday, Kids Day as the Thunderbirds will have an afternoon game. And we'll have that for you here on YouTube.com. Jared, any final thoughts here as we finish this exciting game on this Monday afternoon holiday? Well, it's going to be interesting to see how the Icebreakers respond this weekend in Carolina without Austin Rota, but she's playing well up in Roanoke. They're going to have to rely on Jordan Brandt, who's now he's been solid overall, stopped 30 out of 32 
tonight as Pastuka gets the third start of the game with that first period goal. But it's definitely gonna be interesting to see how well Brandt plays and if they can get any offense against the Thunderbirds league best defense. And Stepan Jurovic, the other part of the Czech Council, on a second star, we know who got the first star. It's Mark Esri with a third period hat trick and a huge performance after that one was waved off. So the final score here today is the Menor Ice Breakers four, the Battle Creek Rumble Beast two, on 52 shots on goal to 32 for Battle Creek. Thanks for listening on this Monday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. Hope you're off. And until next time, we'll see you all later.